Please rise as you're able and turn your bodies and spirits to the cross. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who looks upon us in compassion, forgives our sin and heals our lives. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy, O God. Against you, you alone, we have sinned. In your compassion, cleanse us from our sin and take away our guilt. Create in us a new heart and give us a steadfast spirit. Do not cast us away, but fill us with your Holy Spirit and restore your joy within us. Amen. As tender as parent to child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above the earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from west, so far God removes your sin from you, renewing your life through Jesus Christ. Blessed be God who crowns us with mercy and love. Blessed be God forever. shepherd, you know your sheep by name, and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading comes from the second chapter of Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord.
The second reading comes from 1 Peter. For it is to your credit if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, where is the credit in that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. We worship from all creation sings for our liturgy today. The gospel acclamation is found on page 33 in the front of that blue supplement. Please stand as you're able as we sing together. This is the Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Friends, grace and peace to you from God the Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What an amazing day. So much to celebrate indeed. Good Shepherd Sunday, baptism. We have the art walk after uh, worship today. We have that reception that's going to kind of make it feel all like one big celebration. I truly hope that you'll make your way uh, over to the fellowship hall to continue celebrating the ministry of the School of Grace today and the partnership that we share in making sure that we can impact the lives of especially young children, but families and our community. Good Shepherd Sunday, though, has joined the ranks of many of our other festivals that have kind of been called into question lately. We might think about something like Christ the King Sunday. There's a lot of chatter out there in the liturgical world about like maybe we should revamp or even rename or even maybe do away with something like Christ the King Sunday. I mean, who who even knows a king anyway? This week I was a little surprised to hear a little bit of that same chatter about Good Shepherd Sunday. Revamp it, rename it, call it something else, use the day for something else. It always falls on the fourth Sunday of Easter. Maybe we could celebrate something else because in our shared culture, we don't know that many real shepherds. I know that each one of our life experiences is unique and absolutely valid. So, maybe you do, and maybe you know shepherds. I don't, and I'm trying to remember in this moment if I've ever even really seen a real shepherd. I'm not sure. So is this one of those festivals that's just sort of 
is detached from our life experience and doesn't really make that much sense anymore? Or is it possible that there's something really deep and profound and important going on when we proclaim that Christ is indeed the Good Shepherd? I think the Good Shepherd Sunday is absolutely worthwhile because even if we don't know that much about real shepherds and real sheep, first of all, we get to learn more about them. They're still in the world and they're still important. But also it connects us to something true about Christ that could otherwise be forgotten. And I don't think we should let that happen. Christ is the good shepherd. We are the sheep of his flock. And that is very good news, well worth celebrating. At this point in the sermon, you're probably used to hearing some kind of a little quip or a joke about how dumb sheep are. And so then I guess that's us. And it's no fun to be called a sheep, but that's the reality. But that's not really the reason that we celebrate. Christ as the good shepherd is really a deep, profound, and amazing metaphor for our relationship with God. And of all the beautiful imagery and the promise and the reassurance of the scriptures today, the thing I'm actually most struck by is our music. So inspiring, our music today. And it all speaks the truth of the scriptures so very beautifully. We didn't hear the 23rd Psalm read aloud today. I'm not sure if you noticed or if you care, but if you do, you might be thinking, now, wait a second, what about the 23rd Psalm? I, I thought we were supposed to read that on Good Shepherd. Well, guess what? We've sung it at least twice in beautiful music arrangements. And we're going to hear more about it, too. The adult choir anthem later that you'll hear shortly, it's a musical setting for the 23rd Psalm. And of course, the 23rd Psalm is a perennial favorite. Nobody reads or hears the 23rd Psalm and goes, eh, Take it or leave it. It speaks deeply into our souls. And the song that we'll sing later with the choir is filled with the truth that God walks with us and guides us and cares for us. So does our first hymn today, My Shepherd Will Supply My Need. That's a setting and a paraphrase of the 23rd Psalm too. It reminds us that God never forsakes us and that God gives us everything we need. My shepherd will supply my every need. 23rd Psalm doesn't say that specifically, but what a beautiful way to sum it up. We are used to saying God gives us our daily bread. Okay, confirmation students. What is our daily bread? Well, hmm? All the things we need, right? This morning, this very morning, we gathered together for confirmation class and we took a look at, again, at Luther's small catechism. We looked at the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer. And we looked at Luther's explanation and we decided together that when we say daily bread, we mean everything we need. God provides us with everything that we need to live a good, holy, and righteous life. And so anyway, I love that hymn, My Shepherd Will Supply My Every Need. And the prelude and the postlude today, they're pastorally themed and shepherd and sheep themed. And I always encourage you to really listen to the prelude and the postlude they always sound amazing, especially when you've got a musician like SK. Thank you, SK. In Grace Lutheran Church, we shared a really special moment together this morning. Welcoming the newest member of God's family in beautiful baby Helen, it is such a blessing for us this morning. We proclaim God's promise in baptism, and it's just about the greatest thing that we can do together as the church, and we're so blessed by this event today. But then, to top it all off, our amazing cherub choir came forward and led us in the singing of one of my new favorite songs. It's called Welcome Child of God. That's holy noise, holy noise. Welcome children of God. Listen again to the words though, raindrops, oceans, lakes, and rivers, welcome child of God. Mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, welcome child of God. I love this next line, when the world feels wide around you, when the dark of night surrounds you, we are here to tend and guide you. Welcome, child of God. And the cherubs did an amazing job as they always do. What a proclamation. 
Helen was welcomed into the family of God today. We are all one family. And as Lynn reminds us each and every week in children's music, that means we are all related. We are invested in each other. We care for each other. We welcome each other. And the idea of welcome is so very important. Christ rejoices with us today as Helen is brought into the family. Welcome, child of God, but welcome doesn't end with baptism. Welcoming in God's children is a very key theme for Good Shepherd Sunday overall. And I would say it is a key and central theme to an abundant Christian life too. Our gospel lesson today comes from John chapter 10. In fact, Good Shepherd Sunday always hears words from John chapter 10. For those of you, you know, who know, you know, we're in a three-year rotating cycle, and each and every year we read a different section of John chapter 10. We usually hear the words, I am the Good Shepherd, very plainly. Christ is the Good Shepherd, and we celebrate that. Which It's a full and amazing metaphor, as I've already said. It is so powerful, Christ as the Good Shepherd, that the first images of Christ ever depicted in art that date from the third century in the catacombs of Callisto in Rome depict Christ as a shepherd. You can see it still today if you go there. It's up in a kind of fresco on a wall. It's deep underground and you're surrounded by bones, but there is the image of a shepherd and he's got a sheep slung around his shoulders and there's two more sheep kind of nuzzling at his knees. This must be powerful because for over a hundred generations, Christians have turned to this image and flocked to it as an important way to remember just who Christ is and who we are. But today, this part of the lectionary cycle, Jesus doesn't actually say, I am the good shepherd. Might sound strange, but it's true. He doesn't say, I am the good shepherd. Instead, he says something else. He says, I am the gate. And again, that might sound a little bit strange, but it's true. It's one of the big I am statements that Jesus makes in the Gospel of John. I am the gate for the sheep. I wonder what that might mean. Well, I do know that in ancient times, and I've heard still today in some places in the world, the shepherds would literally lie their bodies across the entrance to a sheepfold in order to provide an extra barrier of protection for the sheep inside, to keep them from getting out and to, get, to keep anything that might harm them from getting in. And that's really profound because we remember that Christ is the good shepherd who literally laid his body down for the sake of humanity. This is a good shepherd who lays himself down, who dies for the sin and the sake of humanity. And so that's profound. But this idea of Christ being the gate also works as a metaphor for the church and speaks profoundly about welcome. I think the most profound lesson that we can gain from this gospel reading is that if Jesus really is the gate, as he says he is, if Jesus really is the gate, then we are not the gate. So often the church has seen its mission as standing at the entrance to the sheepfold, which we might say is the church or righteousness or salvation or whatever, and we get to decide who comes in and who has to stay out. But if Jesus is the gate, then he's got this. He can be trusted. Christ is perfectly free to allow in any sheep that he wants to. And I'm convinced more and more that Christ's dream for the world is that all people, all of God's children, all who are made in God's image, everyone might be brought into the fold. It's not our job to keep people out. It's not our job to be gatekeepers, maybe standing in front of Christ and maybe pre-filtering the crowd. Yes, you may approach. No, you may not. Yes, you can come in. No, you cannot. It's our job to invite and fully and joyfully welcome any and all children of God into the celebration of the church. To give all people the dignity, the respect, and the affirmation that they deserve simply by being God's child, made in God's image. Our council here at Grace Lutheran Church is finalizing some goals 
goals, both, both short-term and longer-term goals for our church together. And one of our stated goals here at Grace is to be intentionally and radically welcoming because the gospel tells us that all God's children, all are welcome and that Christ himself is the gate and that we have this good news to share and we have this amazing celebration. Who wouldn't want to come in and be a part? And the way to begin living the abundant life that Christ talks about today is to trust him and to extend his love to all the world. Christ is the good shepherd. He is the gate. Welcome, children of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of the day today, again, is printed in your bulletin. I invite you to arise as you're able. The words of the Apostles' Creed together during the rite of baptism, we will move on to the prayers. The people's response today, after each year so God, is your mercy is great. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You are the shepherd who gathers us in your mighty and loving arms. Help your church to listen for your voice, especially when the voices of sin adultery, and oppression threaten to overpower us. Hear us, O God. 
your mercy is great. The green pastures, still waters, and dark valleys of this earth all belong to you, O Lord. Sustain your creation with a love that is both mighty and just. Where there is destruction, bring healing. Where there is desolation, bring abundance. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You proclaim shepherding love, comfort, and protection for all people and all of creation. Direct leaders in your own time to learn from your example and instruction. Give them servant hearts that they generously seek the good of all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You journey with us wherever our paths may lead. We pray for those feeling overwhelmed by anxiety or depression and those suffering in any way, especially Jamie, Karen, Melba, Marlene, Ray, Logan, Al, Chuck, Tyra, Dottie, Brooklyn, Trudy, Lori, Jace, Rebecca, Dan, Ray, Donna, Jesse, Dixie, Bob, and the family of Faith Anderson. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You are the sheep gate that gives safety to your beloved flock. Provide protection for refugees, victims of domestic violence, those who are imprisoned, and all people who are vulnerable to violence and mistreatment. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You call your sheep by name. We rejoice today at Helen's baptism and give thanks for your steadfast promise of everlasting life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen.
God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is sure. Word and water, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Receive the gifts we bring and nourish us to proclaim your abiding love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and song. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true pa Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God triune, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Over the eons, your merciful might evolved our home, a fragile tree of life. Here by your wisdom are both life and death, growth and decay, the nest and the hunt, sunshine and storm, darkness and light. Sustained by these wonders, we creatures of dust join in the ancient song, the earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. O God triune, you took on our flesh in Jesus, our healer. In Christ, you bring life from death. We remember his cross. We laud his resurrection. Broken like bread, he enlivens our body. O outpoured like wine, he fills the earth with goodness. Receiving this mystery, we mortals sing our song. The earth is full of your glory. We praise you for the heart of Jesus, so filled with love for this earth. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered around this table, we, your children, unite in this song. The earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. O oh God, triune, you create the worlds, you uphold the living, you embrace the dead. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Strengthen us for our journey with this meal, the body and blood of Christ. Give us a future that trusts in you and cares for your earth. Empowered by your promises, we rise from our deaths to praise you again. The earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. Amen, amen and amen. The Lord Jesus also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, as the disciples ate and drank with their risen Lord, we have been nourished with the very presence of Christ. 
Through this meal, may we be strengthened to keep your word and to proclaim the power of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. <clears throat> the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, hold you in favor, look kindly upon you, and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.